All right, good luck. So right before I started this game, um, a couple of players had challenged me. I could see if I could finish typing my message here. Uh, all right, and we can go back to the game. All right, third file rook. This is exciting, isn't it? This is like the thing that I've been trying to play. And what was it that my opponents have been doing that so confused me here? Um, well, okay, so there are two ways about this. One is I could play central file rook. Um, the other is I could play fourth file. Well, central file doesn't work so well against third, does it? Neither does fourth. Hmm. Hmm, indeed. So what would I prefer to play here? <sighs> I need to give this some careful consideration, but not too much. I don't want to be, like, completely lost on the clock, even before the game begins, but... Yeah, that's a move I've been playing recently, is this double advance of the third foul pawn. Um, hmm. So, the players that were playing uh, I Furibisha double swinging rook... Bishop exchange is still being offered, which means I need to be careful. Um, I think this twin gold castle is the expected response. Uh, if I try playing the silver up on the third file that opens a hole for a bishop to drop. It would be great if I knew castles that permitted my king to castle a different direction. Um, I might still try something like that. Um, but yeah, my king is in kind of a dubious space right now. Maybe this doesn't help. Um, on the other hand, my castle is a bit flexible. <laughs> um, yeah. Not sure if that's okay. <sighs> I do not know. Let's try to activate my bishop and rook somehow. I'm leaving my golds disconnected for some time. Just so they can defend as many squares as possible until I'm sure where I want to put them. Um, so yeah, this is confusing. Also, I'm aware that at the very at the very beginning of this video, I typoed the message in the lobby. I think the basic sentiment of what I was trying to express got across, even if there were two typos. Just because, I don't know. Anyway, uh, so if I take this, Rook takes Pawn Drop. Hmm. I mean, if I don't take it, this becomes pretty awful in the fastest hurry ever, but 
Um, taking does allow his rook to prevent my pawn from moving. I've been there, done that. Um, might want to do it again, I'm not sure. Well, there's a hole in the, right in the center of the board. You know, I'm curious. You want to play with fire? Let's play with fire. Show me how this opening goes. Teach me something. I mean, yeah, this is crazy for me to bring the knight out, but it's... Mm, I don't know. Crazier things are possible. So I'm threatening to take out the center because my opponent has not built anything of a castle. They've just exclusively gone on the attack. And maybe that's fine. Maybe that's a correct way to play the game, but I'm just not familiar. So... I debate, do I move my knight again? Which would allow me to drop a pawn right on the head of the rook. Uh, or do I have something else? Like, taking this pawn makes a lot of sense, but there's not really a good way for my opponent to defend this pawn either. <sighs> if I bring forward the knight, their rook could attack, and I could take the center pawn. That looks interesting. The other thing which looks interesting is if I take this... Oh, they drop a pawn right on my rook's head. That's not so interesting anymore. Yeah. Let's see where this ends up. We're just going to expose my king uh, both along this file and along that diagonal. And somehow everything will be fine. Um, now, I considered that I want to put a pawn on the rook's head. Did not really consider, is that even a good move? I just considered more, is that a possible move? And saw, hey, that looks aggressive. Aggressive moves look fun. Let's do something stupidly aggressive. Um, maybe that's not called for here. On the other hand, attacking is fun. And if this could force a knight exchange, while I'm also like attacking on the left side of the board, maybe that's fun. Um, yeah. All right, shall we go for it? Rook takes pawn. I mean, the first thing I wanted to do was just put the pawn right here. And I kind of discounted knight takes for whatever reason. I didn't think that that was a serious reply. Um, knight takes, rook takes pawn, pawn drop, rook pins the knight, knight takes the free knight, rook exchange... The bishop's hanging. So if I drop a pawn here, this silver can only defend either the rook or the bishop, meaning I could put my rook opposing their rook, threatening a knight exchange. And okay, yes, they could take my knight for free, they could use the other knight to help drive an attack, but if I exchange rooks, I win a bishop. Or if I try to exchange rooks, they exchange bishops, I take their silver, they take my silver, I take their bishop. So, this is weird. Um, this is strange. This looks too fun. I've, oh, I forgot that there is a rook fork, or there's a knight fork back here, but my rook does cover it, just in time. Uh, by the craziest of coincidences. Uh, hmm. Well, I hope I'm playing this right, 
because either this is going very well or very poorly, and we're about to find out. Candidate moves here. Knight takes, or bishop takes, or maybe even rook takes. Or they just move the rook away. And somehow... I've got some initiative. My knight's dead in the center of the board, but when have I let things like that stop me? So I'm debating, like, after my rook takes their pawn, do I drop back and then over and try to hit the bishop this way? And just let my knight drop for free and I get to promote and then I lose my silver? Or is there anything else I can do here to try to keep an initiative? <sighs> I wonder... Well, this is the obvious move. Maybe bishop 5-5 five five was more valuable. Although I don't think either way I would have had a counter to this pawn drop. Bishop 5-5 five five first would have forced some sort of response to it. Hmm. I missed my chance, didn't I? Bishop 5-5, five five, they'd have to like move their silver, uh, which traps their king in. Here, I've just played super aggressively, and I'm going to lose my knight. Well, no. Actually, my knight's safe. This is just a very strange position. But yeah, we've protected the head of my knight, so it's okay, somehow. At least until everything goes dark all at the same time. Until that disaster strikes, everything's fine for now. Um, hmm. That's weird. Alright, so candidate moves, rook takes or bishop takes. Um, I admit, I was looking at bishop takes and completely missed the gold foot fork, my rook and my bishop. So, I'm guessing rook takes is the correct move here. Pawn advance to 3-2 up here could also be interesting. Um, although, like, I don't see any way to continue attacking after that. So, if I exchange rooks, I could promote my rook back here, and then promote my pawn. Eh... It's extremely sketchy. Um, hmm. If bishop takes gold fork, knight takes pawn hitting the rook, they take both of my heavy pieces as I take their rook, and, well, maybe it's okay. Probably not. Um... What else can I consider? If I offer a rook exchange, they drop a rook right on the head of my bishop and knight. I can put my rook back down on this square, and they have to move their rook away. Um, so... Yeah, I don't see what else I can do. Like. If I push this pawn, silver takes, and oh, I've pinned their center pawn, but I have no next move. So yeah, I should just exchange rooks and expect they've got a fork somewhere. This kind of has been the plan all along, and my bishop would not be poorly posted striking here. Oh, hang on. My rook does not have very many squares, does it? Hmm. That's an issue. Uh, 
<sighs> so if they attack my rook, my knight could take the pawn. They get my knight. I've gotten some pawns for it already. We exchange rooks, and then I drop a rook, forking their silver and bishop. It might still be doable. Or if knight takes, then they do gold takes rook. Knight takes rook. All their stuff's hanging. Maybe this is doable. There's a proverb in chess that a brain that is not on sugar is not a brain. And I mention this because uh, today eh, I had a fair deal of sugar. Yeah. It's good now and then to have something uh, that you enjoy. And uh, chocolate has other health benefits, so, you know, sometimes you just have to enjoy. So, not every day. A lot of people overindulge, and that's terrible for the body. But if you never, um, I don't know, try to find whatever that balances in your diet, where some days you could actually enjoy things, you're not going to stay on a diet. Again, that's not an excuse to like do that every day, but yeah, today, um, today was a good day to enjoy things. All right, as expected, and I'm virtually convinced that my only move is knight takes pawn. But what if I take the gold? If I take if rook takes, I drop a gold here. Like, either they're going to return the rook to me, or... Um, or they retreat, and then I take the center pawn, and I have nothing. So it's probably best that I just sack the knight outright here. Yeah, what am I afraid of? This looks convincing. Let's see what they got planned. I think it's fair to say that neither of us prepped this opening uh, 26 moves deep. Um, for one, I did not really know this pawn 3-3 three, three idea could be a thing, but in the heat of the moment, it felt very correct somehow to be doing this. So... Um, that was inspired. Uh, what else can I do? So, if I drop the rook as I planned, that's a fork. If they bring the silver back, my rook's trapped. If I drop my rook back here, um, it's hitting the silver, which could take the pawn, and I could take their knight, and we could see where we end up. Um... Oh, I'm sorry. If I drop the rook here and they move the silver back, that's a free king. Never mind. So, yeah. Um, they could... T bishop takes pawn. I could bishop take bishop. Knight takes... Rook takes silver, threatening their gold and their knight. It's not bad. It's not great. On anything else, though, like if I drop my rook, I start moving pieces away, so I don't get free stuff. The only way I get free stuff is by pinning the silver. Um, so, yeah, I think that's the move here. <sighs> I just wish there were a lighter play at this point. My king is so exposed. I don't want to... Well, hang on. If I do creative stuff, like if I exchange bishops and then I take the silver, my king is always prone on this diagonal. I have to be very careful. Um... Hmm. 
Hmm. All right, screw it. This I don't see any way that this turns out poorly for me. And I see ways that other moves very rapidly turn out poorly. So this is going to be my candidate move. Um, yeah, it looks fun. This could be more fun if, you know, I built a castle and they didn't or something, but, uh, yeah, the opposite happened here. All right. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. I missed this possibility. Yeah, I was saying I didn't see anything. It doesn't mean the same thing as that there is nothing. So, yeah, this is awkward. Um, what can I do? So, they're threatening knight takes pawn, but not really. I think their biggest threat in this position is to do nothing. So if I drop a pawn on... The head of their king, if they do pawn takes, I could take this diagonal and then exchange my rook for a bishop and pile up on the silver if they stick one here. And they just bring the silver forward. That's risky. Um, oh, they're going to drop the rook somewhere. They're going to drop their rook somewhere. Hmm. Oh, hang on. Can I take the silver? Bishop takes... If I promote the pawn, they check me. That's not so bright. Um... Well, this is awkward. For me to find a weakness, I have to start somewhere. I think this is my starting point. There's nowhere else for me to put a pawn. Um... And if somehow a bishop becomes active, then positive things can occur. Um, what confuses me is if they do pawn takes, maybe I drop another pawn here, and then a third one dangling right behind, and then try to move my bishop. And this is exciting. None of my pieces are that active. Except my king. My king is active. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, we're in time trouble. I hear ya.
So This is awkward. Okay, we're going to try to hold everything together. This is going to be sketchy. Oh, crap. I forgot about the knight fork. But maybe a knight is just the piece that I require. What are the odds? We'll find out. <sighs> it's not like the silver was doing anything anyway, but yeah, that's that silver is going to end my rook. Then maybe that's okay. I think this is the best move I can find here. I was so concerned about, like, he's going to drop a rook, and then he's going to drop a knight, and, like, the entire front of my castle is going to collapse. Um, but no, also, I'm prone to this knight fork, which I guess was the greater threat, and I should have just brought the silver into the center. Because, uh, yeah, otherwise we get to this position. Which is dubious because now there is a hole that a rook can drop on. Oh, also, yes, this. So, yeah, that and the silver um, are threatening to um, make this very difficult for my king. Hmm. If a knight is the piece I require, this is not how I dreamed of using it. But what can I do? So, yeah, we've rebuilt our castle. Our knight has returned. And we've given up a silver. And we'll try to play patiently, although this position sucks. Um, yeah. There's really not any sugarcoating it. Um, they're gonna drop a rook. It's gonna hit my gold. Everything's going to suck. But if we hold on long enough, maybe uh, we'll get to play an endgame. So yeah, forgetting about that knight fork um, is painful. The best case situation is if somehow, like, suppose that this rook drop actually doesn't do anything. No, actually, there's nothing I can do to reinforce this gold. And further, if I just move it somewhere, um, this vacates the square the gold stood on. So it could be used by the rook. So yeah, that rook drop does promote. And uh, if they get even one more piece, um, that would make for a decisive attack. Also, they're able to trap my rook with their silver, so they're getting another piece. Maybe in the opening, having two bishops, especially if I put them uh, as a battery on this long diagonal here, that could maybe be a positive factor. Um, not likely, but 
Yeah, so I've been thinking about this for a while, and the only way I survive is if I bring my gold toward the king. Uh, but this has problems. This has, like, they promote their dragon sorts of problems. So, I'm doing the best I can to protect my king. Eventually, maybe someday, it might be my turn to attack again. Um, yes, yeah, so note that they put, like, gold, silver. And I've built silver and a gold. Uh, so my generals do defend each other. But they're one file oh, too far away to be able to protect all the squares on the back rank. So that was the flaw. If I'd put my silver in front of my gold, this rook drop could not have happened. Experience is the best teacher, and now we have the experience to know that doubling pieces on the third file does not stop a rook from dropping on the fourth file. So... Experience is the best teacher, but my goodness, what a cruel teacher. Um, now, like, if they drop the silver on the back rank, which would be really strange if they do that, then my gold moves over, and maybe we have a fight at that point. Like, I said this for illustrative purposes, not because I thought it would occur. Oh, but no, okay, they could still move the rook into the center. So, yeah, even here, there's nothing for us to fight for. Um, hmm. <sighs> Why this move, though? What's the intent? It accelerates an attack against my king. That's the intent. <sighs> yeah, I have no idea what to do against this. I guess we're just gonna let this exchange happen, because I want to activate my pieces. And I have no idea what I should be doing here. My rook is as active as their bishop is. I'm tying down as many pieces I, as I can toward their king. Maybe someday there will be some magnificent tactic, especially if my bishop is not sitting at home. So, On the other hand, maybe this loses a tempo in the event that I wanted to sack the rook and then try to take the lance. Um, oh! Oh dear. Oh me, oh my. That's not good. Um. Hmm. Well, let's see what they do. Mm hmm. So, if I approach the rook, I'm dead. So, I have to go this way. And if I approach the rook, I'm dead. So, we have to go this way. And we'll pretend that that was planned. Because that makes me look a little bit cool. But... The fact that I'm not mated in one is a fantastic uh, circumstance not planned. So, yeah, it uh, looks like my goose is cooked. Um, it's like if they knight drop four or five or six five and then push the pawn, uh, my king has to run and it's terrible. But, I don't know. What else is there to do? 
Yep, so this is a move too. Um, this blocks my bishop. Oh, I was considering a silver drop here. That doesn't seem to cut it. Um, all right, what can we do now? Guess we're running. What's the best way to run here? Uh, let's run this way. This looks like the most interesting way to run. Straight into the center of the board. Why not? Nobody ever suspects um, this racing king. Let's do it. Yeah, I think there possibly was a more patient way to attack than this direct night drop. Although this night drop is very tempting. All right. Um, that makes a lot of sense. That's a good move. That's a very good move. That gold advance is so strong. Um, because it threatens to continue toward my king and also takes away all the scores my bishop wants to use. I guess the weakness of this gold move is that um, it uh, it might be overextended. Like, this gold way back here is overextended, but it did get some pieces, so... As long as my opponent's patient, they'll get their turn to continue attacking. Um, yeah, 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 that's annoying. But again, this could be overextended. <sighs> How do I exploit it? I think this is the best option I have, which is actually a really sad option, but perhaps it points out just how dubious it was to try to advance my king directly toward the center. Maybe I needed to push the edge pawn and race my king up the normal escape route, but 
Um, yeah, here my king does not have much space left. On the bright side, I do have one tempo. Oh. Oh, really? I mean, I'm still probably going to drop my silver here anyway. Um... Well, then that's mate in one. No, it's not. That's mate in two. Alright, maybe we don't drop the silver in a way that gets me mated immediately. Uh, there's no escape, is there? No, there's one escape. One especially painful escape is possible. Alright, I guess we're stuck doing it. This is sad. <sighs> this is the painful escape. Um, and what makes it painful is that they just drop the lance on the head of this shish kebab of pieces right there. And take whatever piece they want. So, um, that's painful. On the bright side, uh, I'm not made it in one. You force the opponent to slow down a little bit and enjoy the game. Oh. Or they just find some way to continue attacking despite my effort. Although this does corral their rook. They must be very confident. Um. Uh, I can't blame them, but I don't know that it's right. Well, my silver's attacked. Should we do the obvious thing? Or should I chase... Now, if I chase the gold, it just chases my bishop. I sack, they take. I sack, they take. This is no good. We need to play something less direct. So... Here we are, claiming some material as our own. Um, that's going to end well. But what else can we do? Yeah, my king is on a vacation here. So, I guess we got to do the obvious, which does nothing to help my position. In fact, I get made it anyway. Is there any way to escape the mate? Um, not that I see. <sighs> no idea, but like, yeah, they've, they've got this for our audience's sake. Let's put it on the board. Yep, there's the mate. There's no escape in this one. Alright, well played. Good game. Yeah, again, the rating system prevails, but uh, this is tourney to master. You can't win to exp You cannot expect to win every game. Yeah, indeed. Nice find. Uh, <laughs> I wonder where I went wrong. Uh, this is this is quite a game. All my games are. Um, so yeah, I need to better learn this stuff. 
Um, at some point, I probably should have been building the Twin Gold Castle instead of just ignoring this. Um, yeah. Alright, so, sorry about that. Um, yeah, it looks like a fun opening, but also it looks refuted. Um, yeah. So, possibly I was just busted straight out of the opening. But I picked this way of playing because uh, I was already extraordinarily confused about what to do. Third File Rook's an exciting opening. Um, let's see, move after move, if I play the best continuation, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wonder. So, back here, um... Like, if I play this, if I have my intent of building this castle, um, not sure your opponent actually refuted it. Yeah, no, that's my sense, is that, like, straight out of the opening, even though, like, yeah, I don't like what uh resulted um somehow i had some hallucination that it would have been okay um hmm. uh, yeah so yeah maybe it's fine i just have some quite negative memories uh in that opening but this did get complicated in a tremendous hurry. Um, so the other thing I considered was this. I wonder just what this is like. So I didn't see this gold fork until right the move before. But maybe this is actually playable. Yeah. I couldn't figure out if bishop takes or knight takes or what the hell was going on. It was really complicated. Um, so, if we exchange here. What's the same? Oh. Then the pin might actually make a difference here. Maybe. Um, whereas in the game it didn't really matter, but here this pin might actually do some damage. Uh, so... Huh. Yes, okay, this bishop takes is kind of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of tactics. And, oh, yeah, that too. Although I think that works out, but... Um, Yeah, at least if my bishop's on the diagonal, it there's that tactic. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not sure what to say. Uh, this 
This looks like a really interesting opening, but it feels like I did something wrong. Um, maybe I'm just saying that because I lost the game. Yeah. So, hmm, I wonder then... Yeah, I didn't think, like, I single-handedly refuted Third Foul Rook. So... Um, there's a lot to read. Knight takes 7-3 was the first position when he was ahead. So... Where was that? Knight takes 7-3? Is this what we're talking about? I'm just talking about the 3 7 somewhere way back here. Oh, this one. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I needed to play better. So I need to take here, and just, like, it's going to be okay somehow. I should stop moving my knights so early in the opening. It's very tempting to do. Oh, the gold 3-2... We'll hand over a little hat here so that he could show us whatever he feels like showing. Um, cool. Rook takes... Um, now what? Well, this wasn't the variation he wanted to show, was it? Uh... Yeah, I've seen... Uh... Oh! Oh, the bishop exchange is still on the table. I forgot about that. Um, hmm. Yeah, that bishop exchange threat confuses everything. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's tricky. Those are good points. Like, that is what determines the direction of the game, but, yeah, this... Uh, yeah, allowing the night fork was very bad. So I probably needed to do this instead. Uh, I think he can see my arrows after he's made a variation move. But uh, if we're looking at different variations, I don't see his arrows. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, this is extremely bad because it made space for the rook drop. Um, this defends against a bishop drop, not a rook drop. So, what else is there to say? Oh! <laughs> uh, what is the saying? Uh, necessity is the mother of all invention. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh... No, I was, like, super hosed. There was no saving 
Your uh, your knight or there was just no way out of it. This might have um, given me more time, but this is painful too. Yeah, I guess I have to take this, right? Oh, I can't even drop a pawn. Jeez, this is painful. Again. <laughs> Yeah, I guess the rook drop immediately doesn't uh, benefit. Oh, huh? What have I missed? Oh, right, the lance. Yeah. Yeah, so okay, they got the lance here. And so that's sad for me. So, okay. Yeah, there was just not a good way for me to save this game. Yeah. yeah that's great. You trapped a rook in pursuit of an attack. Yeah, I was so proud of this move. I tried so hard, but there just wasn't anything there. I guess I was nervous. Um, yeah, there's no way for me to get an advantage here. I mean, what can be done here, right? You exchange bishops, like, have to take this, no? Maybe this is wrong. Maybe the knight fork is better, but still. Um, yeah, maybe I need to do this thing. I exactly. Uh, like, this. there's no way that I'm better here, but... Makes sense that the computer would pick this. Yeah, that's that sounds about right. Yeah, we left emotes only mode when I uh, lost this game. <laughs> I mean, consider that uh, we know what my attacking skills are like. Having options is the last thing I need. I just need, like, an attack. One attack that's, like, the way to go. That's the only way I'm going to find it. Um, there's just so many options, and I make so many weaknesses every time I push any piece anywhere. So. Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. This is great. Uh, <laughs> so, hmm. unfortunately, I think you played a uh, game correctly. So, I'm not sure what else to comment. <laughs> like, yeah, your end game, it was just a great attack. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, it's just like, this is one thing that just continuously built up stronger and stronger. Uh, I don't understand this. Oh, that is, uh, mate. Yeah, here I was going to do that. Okay. Well. In fairness, I didn't see it either. So, this is the other reason. I guess I needed to push the other pawn. Yeah. Yeah, they missed a mate in three. What can you do? <laughs> ah. Yeah. I guess being proud can make it painful when you mess up. Oh yeah. All right, I hear something beeping in the distance. I hope everything's okay. Let's see, went for a mate in 15? That's not bad. Uh... Yeah, I think probably one of the neighbors just probably overcooked some of their food or something. So that if you can hear that beeping noise, that's what that is. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, my opponent did mention that this is already quite late for them. Perhaps they also have some commitments away from the computer. that, Or maybe they're just looking at variations with an engine after the game has completed here. I don't know. Um, so... <laughs> Well, it is late for you, uh, so suppose we should wrap up. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, I guess we'll end our analysis there. Yeah, it was a fun game. I always, yeah. I always make sure my games are fun, but, um, yeah. It is what it is. Uh, yeah. Wouldn't it be nice to be good at attacking? You know, given that, like, I have the one Don thing there and I'm supposed to be good at something. Um, but yeah, they uh, played a convincing attack. They demonstrated all the weaknesses of my castle. 
They showed us how to play third file rook, and even how to confine my rook in the middle of their camp straight in front of my pawn, where, like, nothing can move. And if that weren't bad enough, I just walked into a knight fork and then into a sume, so... Yeah, we'll take it. Um, yeah, I guess better luck next round.